All right, so I wanted to um, touch base and talk about the 29 degrees um, moon, full moon that we had, uh, that was um, the full moon that was opposing the Leo sun, both at 29 degrees. Well, um, let's see here. Um, I wanted to also show the, just the chart, you know, for that, for that time period. But um, now, yes, I, I am an Aquarius, and um, what was really significant for me for this um, full moon was, um, well, I have my north node at 29 degrees Leo, and I have my south node at 29 degrees Aquarius. So this hit a little too close for to home for me. And um, and um, when it comes to karmic numbers, um, you know, people always think you know, like 13's bad or 666 or whatever, whatever. You don't know. The most karmic number of all numbers is number 29. It holds the most significance when it comes to karmic and com and when it comes to good and bad. Um, I was also born on the 29 as well. I was also born on my dad's birthday. So, and anybody that's born on the 29 or has 29 degrees planets or they have numbers that break down into a 29, um, 29 is a, is a number called grace under, pre or grace under pressure. And, um, actually I should, I should pull the book out. Um, but anyway, so 29. So the reason why it's such a, such a, it's a heavy karmic number, more karmic than any other number, even like 666 and 13 and, and all those other, you know, 23 and all that is 29 breaks down three times. So twenty nine, which is a two and a nine, which is Mars, which is Mars and the Moon energy. Anytime you put the Moon and the Mars, to, Moon and the Mars together, it's never usually a good combination. Or whenever you have like um, Moon in a house ruled by Mars, but which is me, I have a my Moon sits in a house that's originally was the original placement of ruled by um Mars. <laughs> or it's not, or if you take Mars and you put Mars in Cancer, because Cancer is ruled by the Moon, so that's Moon energy. So, you know, we always caution against people that have um, especially men that have. Mars and Cancer or Mars in the fourth house because it's that moon energy that's that two and that nine. Now, usually anybody born on 29, they will have um, karmic issues or some type of... There's always some... It's a linking to the mother because, again, that two and the two. Two is ruled by the moon. Nine is ruled by Mars. I should have said that first firsthand. Um, so 29. So 29 breaks down to an 11, which 11, which is two ones, which is the sun. And just think of it this way. The, the one and the one is because... One is ruled by the sun. So just think of two suns coming together and bringing each other out, and, and then we have the moon. So, but anyways, it's two. So the 29 down to 11 breaks down to a two. Now, from now, we've, we've, we looked at it from the two and the nine. Let's look at it from, um, I'm just going to blow this up here a little bit so you guys can see. Let's see. Um, so now with the 11, 11 is, um, it's, a, it's a master number in numerology. It is also a number that correlates in with not only the age of Aquarius, but also Aquarius because Aquarius is the eleventh zodiac sign in the astro in the astro belt. Um, it's from the eleventh house. Um, Eleven is a number for the teacher and the teacher and the student. It's a number uh, that sh shows um, great spiritual significance, but it's also a number that carries a lot of weight to it for people that have life path elevens because they are to learn to um, how to be a, to be a student before rushing into be a teacher, and they also have to learn how to to find a way to naturally, in an organic way, to get along with other people, flow with other people, because it's that age of Aquarius, it's that, that Aquarian essence, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to, you know, um, put down your subjective feelings and your subject, subjective differences, and align together for humanitarian reasons, you know, for, for each other, not just for yourself, you know, it's, it's taking the individual, and putting all the individuals together, and every, it's just coming together, that, that true sister brotherhood, you know, into the, into that golden period, so, so a lot of times 11s will um, have a lot of conflict with other people. They're also to stay on their spiritual path. And it's also a number that, that has great um, you know, no, um, abilities, like psychic abilities. Oh, and 29 is also a magic number as well. Um, so we got the one and the one that's sun. So, but, but we're going to look at it from an 11 point of view. So an 11, um, that's Aquarian energy. It's 11th house energy, networking. And then that 11 breaks down to a 2, and 2 is ruled by the moon. Never so we got that moon in Aquarius. Uh, look at even conjuncted Jupiter, oh boy. Um, Jupiter rules over the number three. So anything that Jupiter, any numbers that break down to a three, there's, it's always about expansion and blowing up and just out of control. Sometimes a good out of control because you know people that that are born on certain days that break down to a three, they have a lot of luck because of Jupiter. Now, so we're looking at the two. So two is ruled by the moon. Moon is also correlates to your mind. It is also like um, when you get to advanced astrology, you start seeing it from the moon being the soul within the soul, or the soul that operates the soul. The true soul that operates the soul. Because, you know, the sun is your soul. 
Now, with the Age of Aquarius, we cannot have the Age of Aquarius without Leo shining its light of the sun onto it. Because um, Leo is ruled by Uranus and Capricorn, or not Capricorn, Uranus and, and Saturn. Which, um, Saturn also rules over Capricorn, so Aquarius and Capricorn are the big brothers and sisters of the Zodiac, you know, the, the 10th and 11th house. You know, 10th house of your career status, your, your, um, your work, your, how you, um, work your karmas off of the life and everything, your dharma, you know, and then into the 11th house of hopes, wishes, you know, get right, right before retirement, you know, then to the 12th. But, um, so, it's ruled by the moon, number two is... And it's your mind, it's your emotions, it's your flow, it's your connectivity, it's your, it's the collective conscious on a, on a subconscious level, it's, it's your intuitive, it's your psychic ability, it's all of that, you know. So 29, 29, 11 to a 2, so it breaks down three times, that's why it's greatest under pressure. And they will go through great strides of good and bad luck, like, and there'll also be something correlated with the mother, like, they'll either have a weird bond or had a bond or have something going on with the mother. It could be good or bad. Now, my my dad, I was born on his birthday. His mom, which is my grandmother, this is crazy, is um, on April 29th. So me and my dad are January 29th. My grandmother is 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 April 29th. So my dad and my, and my grandmother, all of us, we all are born on 29th. My dad has a very eccentric relationship with my grandmother, I should say. I guess we all have eccentric relationships with each other because my mom's an Aquarian moon, so I'm an Aquarian dad and my mom's said she has the Aquarian moon and she's born at 18, so she's just, you know, mean and violent. <laughs> no, she's not. No, she's, not. I'm just, I'm, she's not. She's really, she's actually a sweet little lady now. Um, she used to be able to, you know, throw down all crazy, but no, she's she's up there in age now, but no, she definitely rocked that 18 when she was, when she was younger, though. Um, so, so 29 being a karmic number, the most heaviest of all, and let's see if I can grab it here, if it's the right one, without making a mess, nope, um, I might be able to, I'm trying to grab this book off the shelf without knocking everything over, um, Oh, I think I got it. Oh, I got it. So, I, I want to go back and look at... Let's put a chart. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to... I won't use that one. I'll have to find... I'll use a different one, but... um. So the, during that full moon, we had Neptune at 22 degrees. We call that the control, be controlled, the kill, or be killed number. Um, Uranus was at a 14. Jupiter was at 26, which is a number. Jupiter, Jupiter was at a at a Saturnian number, and then Saturn was at a, at a, a its own Saturn number because Saturn was over number eight. Oh look at that! And Pluto was at 24 degrees, which is a number ruled by Venus because it breaks down to a six. Libra, we got Venus and Libra at seven. Seven is the number ruled by Neptune, and that's kind of convenient, you know, um, Libra being the seventh sign, ruled by Venus, and Venus at seven degrees. Mercury's little punk ass is at 18. He's going to be going retrograde here soon in a couple weeks, so just heads up. Mars is at 14 degrees, so we've got Mars and Uranus both at 14 degrees, which breaks down to a five, and then of course we have the sun at 29. Now, North Node's at seven, so we've got the North Node, Venus, and they're even in a nice little little trying together with with um Saturn I don't know what happened often. We got Saturn Saturn the North Node and Venus all in a nice little little trying there. That's kinda cool. Hmm. That's really breaking that's 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 really like um grounding in some karmic energies there for this um full moon. Pluto's got a nice little pleasant twenty six number, but he likes that. Um Twenty-six is you know, like says by Venus. It's it's, it's a number of um, good luck and beauty and, and people born on twenty-four are freaking spoiled brats. They get away with it so much. So let's say let's say if you were um you know like if you're a Gemini rising or, or a Cancer rising, you know you just basically put that in the first house, which would be where Aries is at, and, and that's how you would, you know look at the transit or look at charts. Um, have to get do that one day, do a video on that. So. Loose stellium there, almost a stellium. I would say almost. I wouldn't quite, quite call it a stellium because 
It's still too far in some degrees there. Um, got a nice little spread out, splash out of the chart here. So, I mean, we had some good aspects during this full moon, but um, again, number 29 is the most karmic number. Aquarius is ruled by Uranus and Saturn. Saturn is a planet that it does rule over karma. It also rules over the third dimension. Uranus is our individuality. It's our rebel. It's our, it's um, it's, oh, Uranus. Uranus. It's it's one of those planets you should read up on because it's, it's quite interesting. It's you know it's that revolutionary individual individual that's like um, who um walks to their own beat of their own drum if they even have a fucking drum. People that have Uranus in the first house or Uranus conjunct their sun. They're very eccentric people. Sometimes more eccentric than an Aquarius. Um, Saturn is about hard work, duty, dedication, delays. Controls over eighth house because it built eighth house, which is a house of Scorpio. So it has a it looks into like longevity. So depending on how strong your Saturn is and what house it's in, everything could correlate into like the longevity of your life. Usually people like Capricorn, if you have a strong Capricorn eighth house or strong Capricorn certain, certain placements in your in your chart or even Saturn, it long long life, very very long life. Um, So, 29 degrees. So we got the age of Aquarius, meaning the light of the sun from the from Leo shining in on it, because it, it's the opposite. So you know, so as as Aquarius is coming in, there's that light from from Leo shining onto it. You know, Leo is the is the kingdom. It's royalty. It's it's the the where Leo is at. It's um God's heart. Well, that would be well fifth house. It's because they're like um God's heart. Um, it's like um you are not able to enter into the kingdom of heaven unless you are of like of a childlike or a essence of a child. Children are seen through fifth house through through Leo. So Leo's opposite is Aquarius. So it, they are basically that's like the the royalty that's like the you got Cancer and Capricorn are the mom and dad. The sun and moon is the mom and dad, but then you've got your your royalty, which is Taurus, Scorpio and Leo and of course the four fixed signs. Um so and with the whole like Leo royalty, the king, you know, it's 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 lying, you know, it's the king of the jungle. It's like, and this world is a fucking jungle. Um, it needs the um, opposition of Aquarius, so it has a balance. So they balance each other out, just like Scorpio and Taurus have a way of balancing each other out. Pisces and Virgo, Libra and Aries, Sagittarius and, and Gemini, Capricorn and Cancer. What whichever one's lacking something, the other one brings that into the balance. So to where Aquarius is always about the collective. Leo shows Aquarius how to be more about itself, and Aquarius shows Leo that it can't always be about itself, that it has to be about the collective as well, you know, just like, um, Aries shows Libra, like, hey, sometimes, you, you know, sometimes it's got to be about you, and you worry about you, and not other people, or Libra's like, hey, you can't always be about you, sometimes you got to worry about other people, you know, and then, like, Aquarius, or Gemini and, and, Sa and Sagittarius, you know, Sagittarius is like, hey, you ain't got to always be running your mouth and, and, and telling everything that you know, and Gemini is like telling such things. Well, sometimes you need to speak up and start telling people things that you do know because you need to be sharing that that information. So like one's basically like shut up, don't share the information. The other one's like you need to be sharing the information. And to where Gemini third house is like gossip and and um, low levels of I don't, I don't even want to say low levels. So it's really not really so much low levels, but because because Gemini's are actually very very profound and, and proficient um, conversationalists and usually have some major cool shit to talk about that's that's it's not low level so i can't say low level um third house is like you know your gossip it, it's like your small talk you know or small talk that you might do you know like with your because it rules over your neighbors and your cousins and your siblings so it's so it's it's that type of talk to where sagittarius is a is that more higher higher out um higher archetype um elevated higher frequency higher vibrational type speak where it's about profound things that, of spirituality and life and traveling and and higher knowledge and and awareness because you know your secondary schools and all that seen through um Sagittarius you know it's like your PhDs and you know just talking about like some in-depth like actual intellectual stimulating stuff you know so but of course they every sign shares energies with each other so Leo and Aquarius, we, we shift energies back and forth. Sometimes I can act like a Leo. Sometimes a Leo can act like an Aquarius. Sometimes a Gemini can act like a Sag, or a Sag can be a little gossipy thingy like Gemini. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, sometimes Pisces is the neat freak and, and Virgo's the messy one. Or sometimes, you know, Taurus is the sex freak and, and Scorpio's the one that just wants to be committed and, and um, not focus on sex, but more on family because, you know, family's seen through Taurus. But, you know, um, 
maybe, you know, Libra doesn't want to have a bunch of friends and just, you know, wants to do their own thing. And maybe Aries wants to have a bunch of friends and doesn't want to be by itself. You know, it's just, they, they can share those energies back and forth. Capricorn, sometimes, you know, Cancer wants to be be the, the cranky old, crouchy, like, workaholic and, and just wants to make money. And, and Capricorn wants to stay at home. Oh, that would never happen. <laughs> Capricorn stay at home and, and, and take care of the children and work. No, that would, no. No, Capricorn, Capricorn is too much of a workaholic. They like to work. I may mean, see them doing it, but then they'd have to have like five other jobs on the side because they like to make their money. <laughs> um, I know I'm missing one. Um, I think, I, okay, maybe I did go through all of them. So, um, so yeah, so they share energies back and forth. So, um, so this moon, this full moon, you know, because full moon, a lot of times you know, coming into completion of something, it's full. Um, Which is perfect with Virgo season coming in because Leo rules over romance and pleasure and sex and all that. So, so a lot of people probably, you know, could have went through some shit during Leo season that needs to be healed in Virgo season. And Virgo would have been like, I told you, you know, and, <laughs> and Leo would be like, yeah, you know, I don't listen. But, you know, it's a time of healing. It's, um, it's a time of practically rationally understanding things and doing things and being in alignment to be not only of a service to others, but, um... But being on top of your game, crossing your eyes, dotting your T's, and all that. Did I say that right? Dotting your eyes, crossing. Yep, dotting your eyes, crossing your T's. Um, because you know, um, Virgo is um the sixth house, which is um, you know, your nurses and your police officers and court cases, disease, um, healing, all that seen through sixth house. Um, small animals, healing small animals, um, service to others, charity, nonprofit organizations. All of that is seen through Virgo. Also rules over the stomach, so nerves. It's because it's ruled by Mercury. Virgos are ruled by Mercury. Virgos are very, very nervous little creatures. <laughs> you know, and a lot of and what I what I mean by that is like if they if something bothers their nerves, it's gonna bother it's gonna fuck their stomach up. You know, if, if something's not sitting right with them, it's gonna fuck their stomach up. If they have some shit they need to get off their chest and they can't get off the chest, it's gonna fuck their stomach up. You know? <laughs> so um they gotta be able and they have to be able to communicate. They have to, they're very communicative. They're one of the most communicative earth signs. Taurus is very communicative too, but in a different kind of a way. But Virgo, that's why Virgo sometimes got to be nitpicky and tuck some shit because they got, it's like little, it's like letting out little farts so they don't fucking, you know, com self combust, <laughs> you know, they, cause they're communicative, you know, and like a lot of times when they're nitpicking on somebody else, it's not that there's so much nitpicking. It's, it's, they're, it's a, it's a, it's a projection reflection type thing. It's, it's a way to keep themselves up on top of their game because they want to, you know, so if everybody around them's on top of their game, then they know they can be on top of their game. But in, but if everybody around them's on top of their game and sloppy, then they, they think that they are not on top of their game and they're sloppy too. I get Virgo. I understand Virgo. Um, well, I also have a Virgo stellium, but, um, you know, so a lot of times it's not like they're trying to be nitpicky perfectionists, but it's just like, it's like a, it's like, it's like a verbal vibrational thing that they should be able to hear themselves of their own frequency registering within their own brain and their own mind to you know, just have, like, that constant verbal, like, little notes, like, little post-its, you know, like I said, you know, so when they're doing their thing, you know, when they're going in, you know, just think of little farts that they gotta let off so they don't explode, you know. Virgos, they put up with a lot of shit, they do a lot of shit. They do a lot of shit for others that they don't have to do, and they know they don't have to do it, but they do it because it, it's not even so much of an obligation, it's just, it's programmed into them, it's wired into them, because they are that sign of service to others. You know, they are that sign of, you know, like if, if somebody's needing help, they're gonna, they know that you're supposed to go help. You know, they are, that's one area where they're not selfish. They are, that's why they are, you know, just angelic in that essence because they will be there to assist always, no matter what. Even if it's not even any, even if it's not required of them or expected from them, they just, they naturally do because they are that service to others. So... So they're going to have to heal us all up from this fucking Leo season. <laughs> all right. Just wanted to touch base on that, you guys.